Finish off with Doc. I hope everything is going good with you. And I hope everything is going good with yours. You know how we do it here. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Some sports, some news, some TV, some life, some news. But we're going to start off with a topic that I like to discuss today. Some people will never change. I mean, in life, you're growing or you're dying. You're evolving or you're remaining the same. We have to come to terms with who people are. Now, hopefully, I am not talking about you, but I am talking about some people that you may know. Because if I'm talking about you, you're going to think, hopefully, about some things that you need to do so that you're not one of those people who are in the dying mode and not in the growing mode, okay? Because the sword swings both ways on this. You can be not changing, and it could be a very positive thing. Or you can be changing, and you can be devolving, which is a very negative thing. You have to figure out what you can tolerate from people as far as them changing and not changing their behavior, their attitudes, their way of living. And you also have to be tolerant to yourself. Is what you're doing helping you or what you're doing hurting you? We are rigid. We are stiff. I mean, a lot of us live in the my way or the highway mentality. Is your way the right way? Is your way the best way? Or should you get on that highway? I mean, there's just some things to think about. We have to also learn. And none of this is, don't take it as me telling you what to do. I apologize for that up front. I'm never telling you what to do. It's your life. You live it to the best of your ability. You don't need some knucklehead stranger telling you. I'm just a seed. That's all I'm, a very tiny seed to make a person think about some things. We should live and let live. We should really learn to live and let live. Because we have to understand some people are scared of drawbacks. Some people are discomfortable with failures. They're not willing to take any risk. They have no foresight. They have no faith. They want to stay safe. They want to stay comfortable. They just don't have the courage to actually go out there and do some things that will either make their lives better, change their lives for the whole well, anything. They just want to stay in their cubby hole and they're good with that. They're good with their low paying job. They're good with an abusive relationship. They're good with life as it is. Because we have to take risk versus reward in all situations. Everything should be a risk versus reward. If you think it out, weigh it, balance your scale. What is the risk? What is the reward if I do X, Y, or Z? Now, a person who sits around and blames their environment, they're blaming other people. They're waiting on a better opportunity or for themselves to bottom out. Uh, Those are people who seriously need to make changes. If you're blaming outside forces, you're waiting for the bottom to fall out. So you're waiting for complete and utter pain before you make changes in your life. That is just foolish because a lot of us suffer just for the lack of knowledge. There are things out there that we can do to make our lives better, but we refuse to take the time to study, to do our due diligence, to look into issues, circumstances, and ways and means to make things better. You know, a know-it-all will never seek help. A know-it-all will never seek help. Do not be the know-it-all. Be humble enough to know that there are things that you do not know, the things that you have not experienced, and things that you need to learn. Because think about this just for a second. The scorpion and the frog, we have all heard the story. The scorpion needed a ride. The frog was hesitant to give him a ride across that lake. But the frog did it against his better judgment. And that's why you got to think about some people will never change. You got to use your better judgment. That frog and that scorpion both lost. 
The frog lost because he was being too kind. The scorpion lost because he didn't give a rat's ass about himself or anybody else. He just went with his nature. Uh, so we have to think about, are we willing to change? Are we willing to do better? Are we willing to move forward in this life so that we don't have things that hold us back and that mostly what holds us back is ourselves. So just think about that for a minute, if you can. And if you get one of these people in your life and they're unwilling to make changes, they're unwilling to give up addictions, they're unwilling to give up uh, lifestyle choices that are sending them back and forth to prison and you're tired of putting money on people's commissary or going to visit them in hospitals because they're always getting into dangerous situations, then you got to think about, should you let them go? Should you move forward with life without them? Are they better off actually having people drop them so that they can now hit that bottom that they need to hit, that they should never have to go that low so that they can make some changes? And once again, I'm hoping that none of these people are you in particular. I hope this just is me talking about somebody outside. But we know all these people. Everybody who's listening to me right now knows some individuals like this who are not willing to really put in the work and effort to change. So I'm going to move on to the rest of the regular show. I'm starting to think that life is cheap to the people in this world. I mean, life is really cheap. We had a guy who lost his life. Another family, whole life is altered because of a football game. A man was killed last weekend at a football game. When a grown-up hits another grown-up with a punch, the potential for death to happen is great. You can fall and hit your head against something that takes your life. The blow could cause an aneurysm or pre-existing existing, uh, condition to uh, pop up and cause that person to lose their life. You got to think about before you strike somebody, ramifications and repercussions, because it could be just that simple. You just think you're throwing a punch and the next thing you know, you're in front of 12 people who are a jury and a judge and they're sentencing you to lack of freedom. We have these two lunatic uh, teenagers, Jesus Ayala and Jasmine Keys, 117, 116, and they are suspected of intentionally striking Andres Pras, a 64-year-old former cop in Las Vegas. It cost him his life. These young men were out in the car just hitting people. I mean, is life that cheap? Now, if you listen to the news, you listen to the media, you listen to social media, life's not worth a dime. Life is the most precious thing on the planet. There's no diamond. There's no car. There's no house. There's no pretty woman, no handsome man that's worth life. You can't get that back. Those other things, you might be able to own multiples, but life, no matter how much money you got, we're going to all face the same thing, and it's called death. So, you know what? Life's not cheap. It's just, that was just a rhetorical question I had to ask. So, Philadelphia, a city that I've been to multiple times. Now, most of the time when I go to Philadelphia, I stay in Center City, which I consider to be one of the better or the safer neighborhoods in Philadelphia. The food there is off the charts. I will say that I love Philly food. I love uh, Sampson Street Steakhouse. I like their cheese steaks. I don't eat a lot of them, but I like that. They have Rittenhouse Square. They have good hotels down there. But they have a restaurant called Jimmy's West. They had to hire armed guards with assault rifles. Now, assault rifles in a street situation is overkill. If you have ever fired an AK or anything like that, you know that for the most part, that bullet is going to go through the intended and it's going to maybe strike somebody who's an innocent standing behind them or whatever. 
So as far as I'm concerned, it's overkill. And I, but I understand that Jimmy West wants to make money. He wants to run his business. He wants the clientele there to feel as safe as humanly possible. But you know what? Uh, the optics on this is horrible. And Philadelphia's cops need to step in. Their man needs to step in. When they feel like their constituents have to hire armed guards with assault rifles, I think that's over the top. And once again, I'm not going to go deep into Philly here. I find Philly to be a bizarre city with its own set of standards and culture that's not found almost anywhere else in America. Uh, you might find it in some parts of Jersey because Jersey and Philly are like bonded, like cousins. But if you've been to Philly, you know what I mean. They look different. The flavor there is different. Everything about the place is a little different than a normal American city. So Michigan State head coach Mel Tucker might get fired without compensation. And what makes this huge is this dude is making $9 million a year as a head coach. He is a black head coach. There are not a lot of black division one head coaches. And to be at a prestigious school like Michigan State, just because he's on the phone. I mean, if this is a married man, you shouldn't be on the phone consensual or not consensual masturbating with another woman who is not your wife. I mean, I don't understand why people can't be loyal. You make a bond to an individual, hold that bond. You might have to miss out on other women, and she might have to miss out on other men, but you could have thought about that before you got married. Now, because he can't control his little head over his big head, this man might lose in excess of $89 million plus his reputation, plus what his kids have to think about him, what they think about him when he goes to the grocery store. I know I made a, a show saying you don't get too high over what people praise you and you don't get too low when people uh, come down on you, but you never want to look like a complete and utter ass. And this is crazy. So Texas prisoner Billy Casimir, 50-year-old, uh, convicted or accused killer of 22 senior citizen women. He was murdered by his cellmate in Texas last week, who was also serving a life sentence for murder. You know, there's a thing called karma. I mean, it's evil to kill 22 women, especially senior women who can't protect themselves and, uh, you know, I don't know if this dude was doing your prototypical bragging about his crimes. Maybe his cellmate was baiting in him, baiting him to tell him the story and see how he reacted and see if this dude was gleeful. And then he decided, you know what, I'm going to snuff you out for your evil, even though I'm a bad motherfucker myself. But you're you're just pure evil. And you know what? We got these guys who do these horrific crimes and they get to live out their lives behind bars. And some of them, I'm pro uh, execution. This dude probably should have been put to death to begin with. So MGM Resorts, cyber attack. We don't know if it's really still going on or if this thing is over. I cannot trust MGM. I don't trust the price. They said that the amount of money that they said they lost during the cyber attacks. I don't like the fact that it seems like when you go online, you still will find people waiting in long lines at places. ATMs and slot machines are still down. I have no desire to be heading to Vegas before the end of 2023. Because I'm an MGM person, I'm not really a Caesars Palace type person anymore. I started off liking the Caesars properties, but then I ended up really liking the MGM properties better. Uh, and New York, New York, for the most part, is my favorite casino to or hotel to stay at. But I hope that they get their shit together. I hope that they do what needs to be done to protect the information that is in their database because I am in their database. So uh, this is personal for me. You know what I mean? Now, recently, I will say over the last two weeks, I have gone to intermittent fasting, which just for me is a reduced calorie intake program. I spend 16 hours a day where I do not eat any food, 16 hours and eight hours a day where I do am allowed to eat. 
but I don't overeat. So far, I've not found myself overeating. I've not found myself needing snacks. But I go from around 9.30 in the morning to, say, 5.30 in the evening, and then I stop again to 9.30 the next morning. And so far, it's worked. I think I've dropped like 10 pounds. I'm not trying to drop a ton of weight, but this was a nice way to just reduce some belly quickly uh, without a lot of pressure on me mentally, emotionally. Because if you don't think that being a little hungry is an emotional, mental thing, you're fooling yourself because it is. I also spent a lot of time this last week listening to music. I was cleaning up my phone music. I was cleaning up my iPod music. I was cleaning up the music that I travel around in my car because I plug in a uh, external player in my vehicle. And I was finding myself listening to a lot of songs that I didn't like. And I have about eight or nine hundred go to songs. Yes, I like music. Eight or nine hundred go to songs that I like to listen to. But I had something like 1,800, and I had to go through each and every one of these songs and do an evaluation if they were worth keeping or ditching. I mean, not that I took them out of my complete library. My home library, they're still there. But my travel around music, I did. I went through it and, and tossed them. And maybe you should do that, too. Maybe you should take a day or two out of your life and do nothing if you're up early in the morning. Just listen to music and see where it takes you. See how it makes you feel. See how it makes you reflect on things. Music is a beautiful thing for the soul. Now, I didn't watch a lot of television, but I did finish up the season finale, mid-season finale of The Shy. And there was a lot going on there. Kevin had a going away pro- a party. Emmett and Rob, Rob tried to kill Duda. I don't understand these two idiots. Gemma, Jake, and Brittany, they got a thing going on there. Gemma doesn't know if she wants to be with a female. She doesn't know if she wants to be with a guy. And I don't think it's just that simple. It's not supposed to be that simple. At least the LBGTQ community says it's not a choice. It's more of a, you're born with it. But you can't have scenarios like this from somebody who's in that community and just say that you could turn this thing on and off is kind of productive to their cause. It's not my cause. I wonder if she thinks about how, how counterproductive this looks to outsiders. Then you have Victor, who doesn't know if he's Victor or is he still Trig? And he has this superhero mentality. He's got to save people. He's got to save Emmett and Rob who are not even real big parts of his life, which makes no sense. The writing on some of this was downright silly, but I liked the show. And what made something that was really silly was Darnell was able to come up with this bag of cash, a a gym bag full of cash. I mean, where did he get this in the middle of the day? This is a handyman. Where did a handyman just come up with all this cash money? And then Brittany, who two episodes before was looking for a couch to crash on, just mysteriously is able to, in an instant, wire Gemma $10,000. I mean, and for what? Who is Gemma to her? This is not even a young lady. She's in a relationship. Uh, I mean, does she find that so attractive that this mystery $10,000, she just wires it like it was nothing? You had Papa and Bakari. Bakari's now a drunk. Out of the blue, he's just a drunk, a stumbling drunk. Papa decides that he wants to follow in his father's footsteps. Now, I initially thought that he just wanted to be a preacher, but I was informed that Papa is at least going to the seminary to examine and to learn the religion that he wants to preach. And that makes more sense to me. I did start this morning, Inside the World's Toughest Prisons. This is season seven. This is a good show. It's on Netflix. It's only four parts this season. Uh, It lets you get a look inside prisons around the world. Uh, Does it always deal with what I would call the toughest prisons? No, the name is to draw you in. 
but it is about prison life in different countries that you might have never thought about, like Finland and the Philippines and Africa. I mean, it's a worldwide show, and I enjoy it, and it came back, and you will find it on Netflix. So the WWE released people left and right. So let's go through some of these names. The WWE released maximum male models, Maysine and Mansur. They were not being used at all ever since uh, LA Knight left them and uh, the chick went over to uh, hang out with Otis and Big Head Guy. I forget his name right now. But they also released an old timer, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler has been with that company since he was one of the male cheerleaders. He's had a highly successful, almost 20 year run there. I don't think that you can really complain about having a 20 year run anywhere. Most professional athletes don't last at their job that long. Dolph should have been able to squirrel away some money. He's had a lot of highlights in his life. So I think, you know what, if he wants to go and work at AEW or Impact or even go over to Japan, God bless him. Dana Brooks, who I never thought of much of as a wrestler, she was released. Mad Cat Roddick Morse was released. Dabakota was released. Dabakota, if you remember him, his big time was when he was running around with Apollo Creed as a Colonel Azir or something like that. And that was a big thing. Now, Shelton Benjamin, who I still think has more in the tank, much like Dolph Ziggler, I believe that he can go and find work easy. So this shouldn't be that bad for him. Shanky, the very tall Indian guy who became like a comedic act who just danced around, he was released. Mustafa Ali, I don't think that he will have a problem finding work going forward. It seemed like WWE never could really do much with him. If I'm not mistaken, he was in NXT for the last six months or so. Aaliyah, who was a, a come and go. I mean, she was there one second, going the next. Rick Booz, who, to me, his best time was with Sensei Nakamura as he was like his intro man with the guitar. Top Dollar, which I never got. I never watched NXT to say very much. And Top Dollar, I guess they were popular in NXT but he did shit while he was on the WWE roster. He's a big man. Maybe NXT, NWA or somebody like that could use him. I don't really see him as an AEW wrestler. There's not a lot of guys his size over there. Emma was let go, but this ain't even the first time Emma was let go. Hopefully she has some self-respect and she doesn't end up in a OnlyFans uh, site. Matt Riddle was also released. People on X were calling for Matt Riddle's release before it happened. And it seems like the masses on social media are happy. Did Matt Riddle add something to the show? Yes, he did. Did Matt Riddle also at the same time creep me out? Yes, he did. I don't like the bare feet. I didn't like the too tight shorts. Uh, I thought Matt Riddle always came off to me as a dude who smoked a lot of weed I knew this type of guy from the neighborhood who has that permanent smile on his face. You know what? He was playing the right dude. He was dude. He was that dude. And But Matt Riddle's also a dangerous dude. So, you know, I wish Matt Riddle good luck. They all got 90-day non-compete causes. So you won't see any of these people until January of 2024, no matter where they go or who they sign with. And Friday Night SmackDown will be moving from Fox to the USA Network starting next year. So Fox, you, I mean, WWE and Fox have severed their ties. Now they're back to USA Network. I don't know how many times WWE has been on and off USA Network, but, you know, good for them. So. I don't talk a lot about baseball on the show, but I'm going to spend like two minutes talking about baseball and I'm going to move on. I want to congratulate Ronald Acuna Jr. for becoming the fifth player in Major League history to join the 4040 club. 
but mostly I'm congratulating him on the being the first player to ever reach the 40, 60, and growing club. This dude has 40 home runs, 60 stolen bases, and there's still some games left. He might be 40, 65, 40. He might even join, make a new club, 40, 70 club. Who knows? But congratulations to him. And also, congratulations to the Minnesota Twins, Milwaukee Brewers, Tampa Bay Rays, the Baltimore Orioles, the Atlanta Braves, the Los Angeles Dodgers for making the playoffs. Now, the Orioles will be making the playoffs for the first time since 2016, so I know their fans must be super excited. Unfortunately, this was a shit year for my Yankees. The Yankees really poo-pooed the bed. They did nothing. They had ample opportunities, but they started off slow. They remained slow. They never got into a groove. Uh, So, you know what? This has been a very long season for us Yankee fans. So we had hype game number three. Colorado played Oregon. Colorado got their ass handed to them 42 to 6. Travis Hunter missed that game and he will miss the USC game and the Arizona State game. Now, Colorado is going to be playing USC Saturday at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So it gives everybody in the nation a chance, well, especially us on the East Coast, a chance to see Colorado again. Colorado seemed small. They seemed like they were being bullied. They were being moved around at will. Uh, I figured that this would happen. A lot of these guys came from HBCU. They're a little bit small at some of these positions. And the talent level on the offensive line for Oregon was just much better. Bo Nichols, who's like 710 years old, probably got 15 grandchildren and been in college since 1922 had an outstanding game. You know, at one point this game was, I believe 42 to zip and they got like a mercy touchdown at the end, but there's a lot to learn. And you know what? I wish this team would focus directly, mainly on football. Forget all the outside stuff. A lot is probably coming at them. A lot of people are probably pulling them left. A, pro- a lot of people are probably pulling them right. And they're starting to feel themselves. And you can understand that being young men. You know, this is, I mean, this is maybe for some of them the most celebrity status that they will ever have in their life. Because everybody, even a Division One college player, the odds of making the NFL are not great. Are there some players on that Colorado team who probably will be playing on Sunday? Yes. Shadua Sanders will probably be playing on Sunday. Shiloh Sanders, probably not so much. But we shall see. We'll see how Colorado bounces back against my favorite college football team, USC, next week. And I'm hoping that they don't. So the Ryder Cup starts on the 25th, which is today, people. U.S. versus Europe, and this is going to go on to October 1st. I thought that they should have did something where they are not playing around with Sunday football. The Ryder Cup should finish before Sunday football because nobody's going to be watching the last day of the Ryder's Cup when they could be watching the NFL. Now, the UFC had a fight night. Uh, Marquez Garment fought Rafael Faziz. And this ended at a TKO in the second round. Faziz got injured. Bryce Mitchell defeated Dan Ng by unanimous decision. Marina Rodriguez defeated Michelle Watterson Gomez by TKO. This was a bloodbath. Michelle, the karate hottie Watterson Gomez, bled like a stuffed pig. It wasn't a pretty sight to see. I wish that this woman would start thinking about her future after UFC and hang them damn gloves up. UFC uh, tough champion Bryant Battle defeated AJ Fletcher by submission. I'm liking how Battle's career is starting off. It's starting off pretty damn good. Charles Jordan beat Ricardo Romes by submission. Tim Means destroyed Andre Fajalo by TKO strikes in the third round. Uh, Kamal Usman's brother, Muhammad Usman, also a tough winner, defeated Jay Kola by unanimous decision. 
Mizuka defeated Hannah Goldie by unanimous decision. Hannah Goldie has just got a beautiful body. I don't think she has much skills. She looks like she could be a professional bodybuilder. I, if not, if I'm not even mistaken, I think she even is one of those uh, only fan girls because of her shape and her body. I'm not saying her face or anything like that. And I don't support only fans i think it's fucking ridiculous to spend money when porn is free to pay for any form of pornography i just think it's ridiculous why would you pay for something that is totally free okay but i wish her better luck she, but i have she's never impressed me when it comes to fighting the ufc is taking some time off the next time that the ufc comes back is going to be 10 7 2023 and on that card, the headliner is Grant Dawson is going up against Bobby Green. I don't think Bobby Green has ever been a headliner. Good for him. Drew Dobb is fighting Ricky Glenn. Chris Gutierrez is fighting Montel Jackson. You got Johnny Muniz is going against Ori Ogleg. Nate Manson is going against Mathis Mendocia. Uh, Eon Kubalera is fighting Felipe Lynn. You got Montana De La Rosa going up against Stephanie Egger. Hopefully that's a good card because the last two to three UFC cards have been mediocre at best. And you know what? This is a good respite for them. Give them a chance to just, as an organization, take like a week break and just like retool and see what they're going to do going forward to the end of the season. My next week show, I have two shows coming up next week. I'm going to have out my close out of all my third quarter clips. That's going to be the best of Strange Talk with Doc from July through September of 2023. And then the following day, I'm going to do a show on Find Your Lane and Ride in It Until Your Wheels Fall Off. Now, let's get to the NFL. The NFL, Nick Chubb is out for the season. He had a knee injury. Nick Chubb is one of my favorite football players, not because he's a good interview, because the man doesn't say four words. It's because of the style of football he plays. He plays like he's from another time. And you know what? I wish Nick Chubb nothing but the best. Saquon Barkley has a sprained ankle. He was out Thursday's game, and he's considered day-to-day. We don't know how that's going to go, but like I said, day-to-day. The Cardinals put Buda Baker on the IR for his hamstring. The Chiefs did the right thing and paid Patrick Mahomes. They agreed to terms on restructuring his contract, and he now will receive, listen to this, people, $210.6 $210.6 million between this season, 2023, and 2026 season. That is the most in NFL history over a four-year span. The Rams traded running back Cam Akers to the Minnesota Vikings. Tra- Trayvon Diggs, the cornerback for my Dallas Cowboys, is out for the season. He tore his ACL in practice. And yesterday, the NFL announced that Usher will be the halftime show for the Super Bowl. Usher should be able to get on that stage with him. A lot of people that he did collaborations. The man does a show in Vegas, so he's well aware. And it's probably easy for him to move his whole production studio over to uh, Allegiance Field. And so I'm expecting nothing but a great show from Usher at halftime in the Super Bowl. I think this is a good pick. I wasn't thinking about him, but I think it's a good pick. Now, Thursday, we had the 49ers play the Giants. And the 49ers won this game 30-12. to Debo Sanders was a beast. He caught six passes for 129 yards. Christian McCaffrey was Christian McCaffrey. He had 119 total yards. And he also tied Jerry Rice's franchise record for scoring a touchdown in 12 straight games. George Kittle scored seven passes for 90 yards. Brock Purdy threw for 310 yards and two touchdowns and improved his record to 8-0 as a starting quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers 
in the regular season. This man has never lost a regular season game yet. Now, yesterday's game, we had the Bills beat up on the Commanders 37 to 3. Josh Allen threw for a touchdown. He ran for another. The Bills looked good. The Browns beat the Titans 27 to 3. Deshaun Watson had two touchdown passes. Miles Garrett lived on top of Ryan Tannehill. He had three and a half sacks. The Lions beat the Falcons 20 to 6. Jared Goff threw for a touchdown and ran for a touchdown. The Packers beat the Saints 18 to 17. Jordan Love set off a fourth quarter comeback and the St. Packers scored 18 straight unanswered points. Now, Derek Carr got injured in that game, and this bum kicker for the Saints missed a field goal to win the game at the as the clock ran out. I hate when kickers do that. They have a chance to be the hero. They have one job. I mean, perfect conditions. We're not talking any wind, any rain, any snow, nothing. And he can't make a field goal to win a game that his team fought hard for. The Patriots beat the Jets 15-10, kind of a game that you would expect. New England extended their streak over the Jets to 15 straight victories. The Texans beat the Jaguars 37-17. Coach D'Amico Ryans. And rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud both got their very first NFL victories. The Colts beat the Ravens 22-19 in overtime. Matt Gay kicked four field goals over 50 yards, including the overtime winner. My question is this. Why in the world did they not have Lamar Jackson run a few times on those second and longs or third and longs in overtime? The man had over 100 yards rushing. He didn't seem that accurate yesterday, so his legs were what was working. Shanahan, I thought whoever the offensive coordinator was, really blew this. There was one time they were third and like six, and he threw a pass. If he would have just ran, I mean, you can't, you cannot put it on Justin Tucker to kick 61 and 63 yard field goals all the time to win football games. The Dolphins beat the Broncos, and I'm not stuttering or stammering, 70 to 20. This is the most points scored by an NFL team in a game since 1966. They could have even tied the record for all time points, but they took a knee instead of kicking the field goal. That was pretty classy of them. Devon and Chain rushed for 203 yards, and he combined with veteran running back Rasheem Mostert for eight touchdowns. Two dudes had eight touchdowns, four apiece. Tariq Hill was Tariq Hill. He had 157 yards receiving on nine catches. Tua Tuvaluva passed for 309 yards and four touchdowns. You had the Vikings beat the Chargers 28-24. Justin Herbert threw for 405 yards and three touchdowns. The Vikings, who now fell to 0-3, but you know Kirk Cousin got his numbers, but he couldn't come through when they needed him to come through. He's missing passes on that last drive. It was not too good. The Chiefs beat the Bears 41-10. to We're going to call this the Taylor Swift game. Everything was Taylor Swift. Every action was Taylor Swift. Every time that Casey did something, Taylor Swift. But you know the real story was Patrick Mahomes threw for three touchdowns. Kelsey was Kelsey. He had seven catches for 69 yards and one touchdown. Patrick Mahomes became the fastest quarterback ever to reach 25,000 passing yards in his career. I mean, this was no game. The Bears looked horrible. The Seahawks beat the Panthers 37 to 27. Kenneth Walker the third rushed for 97 yards and two second half touchdowns. You had Bryce Young out with injury, so Andy Dalton started. He threw for a ton of yards, but You know what? This was one of those games, one of those NFC boring games where they just grind it out. Now, the points seemed like a lot, but it wasn't exciting. The Cardinals beat my Cowboys 28 to 16. Jonathan Gannon 
got his first win as the Arizona coach. Joshua Dobbs got his very first win. And he's a veteran quarterback. He got his very first win as an NFL starting quarterback. The Cardinals pretty much ran the ball down the Cowboys' throats. Dak Prescott looked pedestrian at best. And this was a very disappointing showing for the Cowboys. This was actually an embarrassing showing for the Cowboys. Even though the score was only 28 to 16, the Cowboys were never in this game. The late night game was the Steelers and the Raiders. The Steelers won this game 23 to 18. Kenny Pickett ran, I mean, passed for two touchdowns. The Steelers ended a road losing streak to the Raiders that went back to 1995. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo got his numbers. He was 28 for 44 for 324 yards and two touchdowns, but he threw three interceptions. He did hit Devontae Adams, who is phenomenal, and finished with 13 receptions for 172 yards. But Garoppolo makes a lot of errors. He has always made a lot of errors, and he continues to do so. Now, Monday Night Football, you got the Eagles playing the Buccaneers. They are going to burst uh, Baker Mayfield's bubble tonight. There's a doubleheader. The Eagles, Bucks, Rams, Bengals. Bengals, I don't know if Joe Barrow is playing or not, but the Bengals are a better team than the Rams, so I'm picking the Eagles, and I'm picking the Bengals. Now, you. Yeah. Thursday night football game, you got Detroit Lions going into Green Bay to play the Packers. I'm taking the Detroit Lions on the road to win this game. You got Atlanta playing Jacksonville. This is a 8.30, 5.30, or 9.30 game. No, 8.30, 6.30, or 5.30 game depending on where you live, because this game is from London. This is the very first overseas game of the season, and I look forward to being able to get up in the morning, eat breakfast, and have an NFL game while I wait for the regular schedule. Miami versus Buffalo should be game of the week. It should be high scoring, but damn, Buffalo's, I mean, Miami's offense is beastly. I don't know if Buffalo can handle this, so I'm going to actually take Miami on the road to win this. The Broncos are going into Chicago to pay the Bears. I even think that the Broncos coming off that debacle 70 points is better than the Bears team because Justin Fields and that team is garbage. The Ravens are going into Cleveland to play a division rival. Baltimore really needs this game. You know, this is a tough one, man. These division rival games are not easy to pick. But I'm going to pick the Ravens to beat Cleveland. The Bengals are going into Tennessee. And I'm going to take the Bengals as long as Joe Barrow is playing. If Joe Barrow is not playing, I'm going to go with Tennessee. The Rams are going into Indianapolis. I like the way Indianapolis looked yesterday, so I'm going to take them at home. Tampa Bay is going into New Orleans. New Orleans Saints defense is tough. They should be angry about how things played out this week, so I'm going with the Saints. Washington is going into Philly. Philly's just better. I'm going with Philly. Minnesota is going into Carolina. Minnesota has got to get their first win of the season against Carolina. Pittsburgh is going to play the Texans. I like Pittsburgh Steelers in this game. The Raiders are going to play the Chargers. I'm going to stick with the Chargers at home in L.A. over Las Vegas. New England is coming to Dallas. Dallas is going to have what's called a bounce back game. New England, Matt Jones have no offense. The Dallas Cowboys don't even need to score but 20 points to win this game. I think they can get that. The Cardinals are going in to play San Francisco. San Francisco is on a roll. They are a machine. They're well all. They beat Arizona. KC Chiefs are coming into New York to play the Jets Sunday night. The Jets get another ass whipping, well-deserved ass whipping for them and their fan base. And then Back-to-back, premium games, New York. You got Seattle going into New York to play the Giants. Seattle should be wanting revenge because they lost to the Giants last year. Uh, The Giants, without Saquon, are just not that good. That passing offense stinks. So I'm going to take Seattle on the road to beat the Giants. 
And let's just recap real, real quick. Some people will never change. Figure out, I guess the most important thing other than kindness, compassion, is tolerance. What can you truly tolerate about them not changing their behavior? Because all behavior is not bad behavior. Some behavior, you want a person to maintain the same energy that they've always had in their life. They could be doing some really positive things. And why would you want them to change? So just think about your environment, what you can handle, what you cannot handle, what you cannot handle, and you don't see any growth because growing or dying, people, is always growing or it's dying. And you got to figure out, are you going to be there for the funeral or are you going to be there for the harvest? And I appreciate you. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you listening. If you would like to subscribe, please do so. If you would like to share, you can more than you can do that. If you would like to comment, I'm always free to listen. And I'm going to tell you like I tell you each and every time, people, peace to you and peace to yours.